I want to just bring in uh, all of our legal experts, though, as we're getting ready for that. You can see it up on your screen. Attorney General for Washington, Bob Ferguson, Solicitor General Noah Purcell will be speaking. Uh, now, though, Laura Coates is with us, uh, former federal prosecutor Alan Dershowitz, Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law School, Ariane DeVogue, who covers the Supreme Court, Paul Callan, former prosecutor, and Jeffrey Tubin, former federal prosecutor. As we await that press conference, let me just ask you here. The President of the United States has now come out and said uh, that he thinks that they will win. Uh, see you in court, and moreover, that he thinks this decision was political. Well, four judges have looked at this case so far, and all four have come out the same way. Uh, two Republican appointees, the district court judge and one of the three appellate court judges, and two democratically appointed uh, 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 judges. So yeah. uh, for a, you know, in, in a world where uh, Democrats and Republicans often see things differently, we have two Republican judges, two Democratic judges seeing this case the same way. Doesn't mean they're right, doesn't mean the ultimate right. result of this case will turn out the same way, but it's a pretty tough argument to make at this point that they are all just simply opponents of the Trump administration rather than judges doing their job. And as we await this Washington State presser, Paul, I want to point out, right, that they we are days away from arguments in the underlying constitutionality of the ban itself, right? This was a restraining order, essentially, yes, right? It was. But this ruling was not just a ruling on the restraining order. They were very clear. They laid out, they had to say, do you have a chance of, of having this upheld on a constitutional basis? And they seemed to find again and again and again, no, they really ripped it apart. This was a stunningly detailed decision by the appellate court, uh, which really kind of sends a message, I think, to the district court uh, on the preliminary injunction that the appellate court uh, is strongly against the government. And I wanted to say one other thing. Hold on. on and, and Alan, there was, a, there was a compromise that was uh, during the oral arguments we all heard uh, August yeah. Flinchy put forward, uh, a compromise, right, that would have said, well, this only applies to people who've never been to the United States before, sort of giving them an out, right, for things like uh, green cards or already granted visas. They also very explicitly here say they don't, they're not buying that either. I mean, they didn't give them a millimeter. Well, I think they were right not to buy it for purposes of the stay, because to create, to undo the stay now would have created chaos, especially if they have to, two months from now or a month from now, reinstate it. But I think when it, the case gets to the Supreme Court, Chief Justice Roberts is very, very tough on standing. Uh, he has used standing often to avoid reaching these kinds of difficult constitutional issues. And this is the most extreme case of standing that I have ever seen in my 53 years of appellate uh, litigation, having the state of Washington have standing to assert the rights of people who have no contact with the United States, that have never been in the United States. There are two possible ways of making that argument. One, as an establishment of religion, where, remember, the Constitution doesn't just grant a right there. It says Congress shall make no law. It's a restriction on the federal government. That's one way of doing it. Yep. The other way of doing it is to say that, look, we really have an interest, our tax base, our students, et cetera. It's going to be a hard, hard row in the Supreme Court. There's no way of predicting the outcome of this case on the merits if it gets to the Supreme Court. Laura, what do you think? Well, you know, what's so striking to me is the fact that the court does concede that the President of the United States it does should could get deference when it comes to national security but the reason national security interests were a, a paramount concern to this particular court is because of procedure look the lower court said, we're going to suspend this ban. In order for this court to reverse that ban, they asked the Department of Justice to explain to them why returning to the pre-travel ban status quo of the vetting process would somehow hurt the federal government and its citizens. Tell us what you know. What is it about our new, perhaps novel, national security risks that require us to go back to an, or have a new system of vetting? And unfortunately, they had no response. And that's also one of the main components of this order. The court is saying, we agree there is deference, although we can review it, and we did when it came to Japanese internments, and we did when it came to giving communists or denying them passports. But if you actually have a valid reason, now is the time to tell us. And now came and went. All right, we just, uh, as you, you, you finished speaking, got in the audio of the President of the United States uh, responding uh, to this. Let me play it for you. Here's Donald Trump. This is just a decision that came down, but we're going to win the case. And have you conferred with your new attorney general on this tonight? Is he a No, I haven't. Now? We just heard the decision. How did you find out about the decision, Mr. President? Just saw it. We just saw it just like you did.
All right, obviously a little bit of an issue there at the end, uh, but this was that was his immediate reaction. Of course, he'd said also went on to say that that he thought this was uh, political. Uh, David Gergen is also here with me uh, right now, and also with me, Mark Preston, our senior political analyst, Bill Crystal, editor in large of the Weekly Standard, and Kelly McEnany, contributor at the Hill, joining all of our legal experts. Uh, when you hear the president's response, saying that this is political, saying they are going to fight it, tweeting "see you in court" in all caps, Kelly, you. you know, does does beg the question here of Will Donald Trump stop attacking judges? Look, tonight all he said on Twitter is, I'll see you in court. He did those say, we just heard him, his audio, it's a political decision. This comes on top of tweets about Judge Robart, who is now, of course, going to be, uh, was the, originally did the ruling here as this continues in district court on the constitutionality, where Trump said, just cannot believe a judge would put our country in such peril if something happens, blame him. And in the opinion of this so-called judge. And now here he is again tonight saying it's a political decision. Do you think he understands that that kind of talk might have really just backfired on him and that's why partially this could have been 3-0? Well, I, I think he realizes and hopes, as we all do, that judges would rule based on the law, not based on the fact that they were criticized by a co-equal branch of government, uh, that is to say, the president. But, you know, I do have to say, I think it's a very smart point by Professor Dershowitz. If you look at this ruling, they basically ruled on, on two things. They, they looked at due process rights and said legal permanent residents have due process rights and also aliens who have been in the country leave and try to come back. So Donald Trump could easily rewrite this, and I think he'd have better success going to the Supreme Court, because as we know, you've got three right-wing justices, four liberal justices, and Justice Kennedy who could really go either way. So just practically speaking and, and politically speaking, he can continue criticizing the judiciary all he wants. I have no problem with that. But uh, practically looking at, at go the legal landscape going forward, re rewriting it might not be such a bad idea. Well, I, mean, okay. but I, I mean, rewriting it makes all the sense in the world. But this is such a thorough but, repudiation but, of the whole but, concept. But, but, but. Isn't everything we know about yeah. Donald Trump that he is not going to rewrite this? Isn't he going to say, I was right from the start and I am going to mm -hmm. push this as hard as I can I think and the judges are wrong? Yes, it makes all the sense in the world to rewrite it. I, I think but we, he's never going to do it. I think it. we have to remember something very important, too. And the president has said another judge, we were talking about four judges in the West, said we're unanimous on this. But the president keeps citing the Boston judge, Judge Gorton, who wrote a 20-something-odd page decision totally opposite to this, saying uh, there were standing problems, saying that uh, no due process violations occurred, no right. equal protection. This was regarding so, two professors. Uh, it, 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 different people involved, but yeah. we're talking about the same executive order, and we're talking about whether the, pro the president has primacy in so the you, area of national are security. Are you getting to you think he can win? I, well, I'm not so got. sure that he'll rewrite it. I, th I agree no. with Jeff that... Yes, that would be, and Professor Dershowitz, that's the sensible way to go. But the president keeps citing the Boston judge. He was angry at his lawyers, remember? Because they didn't spend time invoking the Boston judge, Judge Gorton. And I think he's going to fight this to the wall in the Supreme Court. Alan. But that would be a big mistake because he can use the Boston judge to his advantage. If he goes the Ninth Circuit route, he is likely to have to appeal from a Ninth Circuit opinion that's unfavorable to him. If he doesn't appeal this order, which he will lose in the Supreme Court on a stay, and he waits for some decisions to come from other courts with more favorable circuits, the case he brings to the Supreme Court could come from a circuit that rules in his favor. So then if there's a four to four split, he wins. Well, but Alan, he now, you're talking, yes, now you're talking like, logic. Now you're talking logic on the part of the president. And the president has been a gut instinct yeah. player with the American people throughout the campaign. Well, also, Laura, there are, you know, you have uh, the state of Virginia uh, with, that is trying to proceed ahead with a case. You have 17 other states you that do. have filed amic uh, amicus brief in that particular. I mean, there, there are states across the country now. They were ready for, to lose today so that they would have other ones coming behind it. And they, there will be more cases yeah. coming along. And remember, when we talk about going to the Supreme Court, that, that's going to happen in this case. But when it does, it'll still be bounced back to the original 
district court in Seattle. Because remember, there has been no record. There has been no full deposition. We are we're told in this new order that you can look behind the intent of the ban. You can figure out if it was a really a secular purpose or whether it was really a, a pretext for discrimination. And if that's the case, you have to develop it. We talked a lot in the oral argument. The um, Washington State Solicitor General said, look, I, I need an opportunity to have discovery. I need to be able to have the opportunity. And the courts will likely bounce it back for that. So we're not talking about an immediate um, discussion on the full merits in front of the Supreme Court. So it's a little speculative at this point but, to figure out what they'll rule. But okay. in the meantime, yeah. in the meantime, the order stayed and the country is at risk, according to Donald Trump. And if the country is at risk because this order has stayed and will, and will remain stayed for at least a period of months, almost certainly, his only option to protect the country is to withdraw the order, write a new order that protects the country while at the so, same so time... So let me just interrupt you for a second answer, because I'm trying to understand what, what, Jeff, that would be. I mean, obviously that you're going to have other... other uh, districts, et cetera, et cetera, that would challenge it. But this is a wide sweeping repudiation. It says that whatever he said about Muslims on the campaign trail is good enough to show his intent. It says that it doesn't matter if no one's ever been in the United States before. It, you, that they, they have the right as a state to uh, constitutionally protect those individuals. What executive order could accomplish what Trump wants to accomplish that doesn't run into the same problems that this right. repudiates? It, it, it's, it's difficult. But, 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 Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, well the, the, the uh, one way you could do it is you could say people from these seven countries who have some connection to political activity, they're the ones who are uh, who will not be allowed in the country. So you're much you more specific about your class. It. Exactly. The, the, it's not just a religion. It's not just the majority relig majority Muslim countries. It's a subcategory within those people, that would certainly be much more likely to be upheld change, by the court. You could change the minority yeah. religion section as well and uh, not refer to that, and you might uh, solve some of those establishment clauses. All right, he's All not going to do I mean, yeah, he, right. I mean, he's just not going to do that. He's, right, no. he's going to fight this executive order because it's his executive and that's order. that's what he said he's going to do. Right. All right, everyone stay with me. 